Folks, in the beginning guide to KH part one, we talked about what KH is, and I used the analogy that KH was like the ozone layer for your pH. It protects your pH from acidic nitrates that might eat away at it, causing pH drops, which are toxic to our fish. In part two, we talked about how to measure our tank's KH, and we talked about recommended KH levels, depending on the type of fish you want to keep. In the third part of the series, we're going to talk about how to raise your tank KH or lower your tank KH, depending on your aquarium goals. That is all coming up right now. Why would we want to raise or lower our KH? It's so that we can raise or lower our pH. Maybe we're keeping fish such as neons or cardinals and we want to keep sword tails or guppies. We need to raise our pH and in order to do that, we have to raise our KH. Or maybe we're already keeping live bears such as sword tails or guppies and want to keep neons or cardinals. We need to lower our pH and to do that, we need to lower our KH. Now, while many in the hobby do raise or lower their KH in order to raise or lower their pH, for most of us, raising or replenishing KH will be much more common if KH levels get a little bit too low. So starting out, let's talk about how to raise a tank's KH. And yes, folks, we're gonna start with the good old water change. This is how most of us replenish the KH in our tank water. Most municipal systems have enough KH in their water to replenish it in our tanks. So water changes once a week, of course, a good rule of thumb. And if your KH is a little low, a simple water change just might do the trick. Now a tip on water changes. If you have a lot of decomposing organics, plant matter and mulm on the bottom of your tank, this can raise your nitrates and the higher your nitrates get, the more it drops your KH. So if you see a lot of mulm on the bottom of the tank, give it a good gravel vac that will help maintain your KH levels. Number two, another way to raise KH is with crushed coral, widely available in the hobby for purchase. You can mix this in your substrate or add it to your filter in a bag. This comes from dead coral reefs. It's high in calcium carbonate, so it gives your tank a good KH boost. Now the acidic nitrates in your tank react with the coral, causing it to release calcium and carbonate in the water. Now the more you add, the faster your KH will increase, but eventually it does even out. So if the KH doesn't get high enough, you may need to add more. One of the places you can buy this online is with Corey and the good folks at Aquarium Co-op, only $5 for one pound. So a very cost-effective way to raise KH. Number three, you can use alkaline buffers. Now this is also widely available in the hobby. Many companies have their own versions. It presents a nice formula of mixed ingredients to ensure you achieve the KH you want without much hassle. This very well might be the easiest way to raise KH and keep it consistent in your tanks. Now I do like Seachem's version because I like the dosage calculator they have on their website. So I'm on Seachem's website. They give nice instructions on how to use the buffer but they also have a dosage calculator, which I found very helpful. So we have an area for water volume, how many gallons is your tank, what your current KH is, and what your desired KH is. So as an example, if I have a 20 gallon tank and my current KH is two, and I wanna move that up to four, I can roughly calculate that that's gonna be two teaspoons of the alkaline buffer, and that should give me the result that I need. So a very effective tool that Seachem has on their website. Number four, this is a little harder to find in the hobby, but you can use dolomite rock. It's available in the hobby as a substrate. It's made up of calcium, magnesium, and carbonate. It releases all those minerals in the tank, increasing your KH. You can buy it in various colors, but again, it might simply be easier and more cost-effective to use crushed coral. Number five is aragonite. Now, this is also widely available in the hobby, though it's mostly used for substrate in African cichlid tanks like crushed coral. The nitrates in your tank react with it. It causes it to release calcium and carbonate, and this increases your KH. But again, this is more designed to be a full sandy substrate. So again, it might just be easier to use crushed coral. And number six, last but not least, you can add soda ash to your tank. This will greatly increase KH and pH, and that's why it's primarily used in saltwater tanks. It's added in small daily doses, but it can be hard to measure. Much easier to simply use an alkaline buffer like Seachem's, though soda ash is an option. Now that we've talked about how to raise the tank's KH, let's talk about how to lower a tank's KH. Number one, you can simply use distilled water from the shelves of your local grocery store. This is water that's heated until it turns into steam. It passes through a cooler, it's collected, and all the impurities are taken out. It's pure water with no KH. You can mix this with your tank water until you get your desired KH, but it can be expensive to buy distilled water all the time. That's the only drawback. 
Now, of course, number two, you can make your own with an RODI unit. Using reverse osmosis and deionization, this turns water into pure water with no KH. You can mix this with your tank water as well. The setup cost can be expensive for these units, but you can save money over the long term versus buying distilled water all the time. Number three, we've already talked about alkaline buffers, but we also have acid buffers that convert our KH to carbon dioxide, reducing the KH. But acid buffers are usually used in planted tanks. Remember, they create excess carbon dioxide and we need to have plants to absorb that excess carbon dioxide. So if you don't have any plants, go slow. Without plants, overdosing can result in excess CO2 and a pH that plummets as the KH comes down and that can be toxic to our fish. So if you don't have any plants, go slow with the acid buffer. Number four is a very popular and cost-effective way for lowering KH with Indian almond leaves. As the leaves break down, they release tannic acid and that eats away at the KH. You can see a packet on the right-hand side I bought a little while ago. They do have medicinal properties, protecting against skin issues and help wounds heal, but they will slowly and gently lower KH. So if your KH is really high, these might not make enough of a difference. Keep that in mind as number five, peat moss. Just like the leaves, peat moss releases tannic acid that eats away at the KH. You can put this in a mesh bag and put it in your filter. It's good for small reductions in KH, but make sure you buy an aquarium safe variety, peat used for gardening. That's fused with chemicals to cut down on mold, so make sure it's aquarium safe. But whatever your tank goals are, remember, keep some level of KH in your tank to avoid unsafe drops in pH. Fish need stable pH to live long, healthy lives, and KH does that for us. Now, you might recognize that many of the methods to raise or lower KH are the same methods used to raise or lower pH, and that's because in order to raise or lower pH, we first have to do it to KH. Folks, I hope that video and series was helpful. Please like, comment, and subscribe for future content. And as always, thanks for watching.